One of the non-conference matchups you circle when looking at the women's soccer calendar comes your way this evening from Gainesville with the number eight Gators, two-time defending SEC champions, hosting two-time defending Pac-12 champs and co-number one Stanford. From Gainesville with former Florida national champion and three-time Olympic champion Heather Mitz, I'm Jonathan Yardley. We've been pumped for this one for a while. Two of the best teams in the country. They usually have most of the ball. They're going to have to share it today going head to head against another power. Absolutely. One of the things that I found really interesting when talking to both of these coaches, they kind of echoed the same sentiment. They said it's very early in the season. Both of our teams have a lot to improve on. But the one nice thing about playing against one of the top teams in the country this early is that you highlight your weaknesses. Then you go and fine tune it and you focus on the conference. For Florida, when they've had to fig figure out a weakness, they've turned to Gabby Seiler. She can be a great attacking player, but when they struggle defensively, she moves to the back. She really has stepped it up for the team. They weren't sure who was going to step up in the place in the absence of Savannah Jordan, but it has been Gabby Seiler. We see her a lot in that attacking midfield position where I prefer her, but tonight we'll see her in the center back. We saw her there last year as well. She has the experience, the leadership, which they're going to need tonight against Stanford. For the Cardinal, Andy Sullivan's going to make her first start since she tore her ACL in the NCAA tournament last year. Already four caps for the national team. What a great player. Yeah, limited minutes for her, but it's great to see her getting the start tonight. And why is she so dangerous on the field? She'll sit in front of that back line. She's so active, looking to link up the back line and the midfield and the forward, the unbalancing run and behind, and her technical ability in the final third. One of the best matchups you could ever ask for prior to conference play. It's Florida hosting number one Stanford. They kick off next. Back to Gainesville, Florida, and SEC Network Soccer with the number eight Florida Gators hosting co-number one Stanford from Disney Stadium. And for the Cardinal, a 4-3-3. They start two freshmen, pick it at right back and Katarina Macario up front. Yeah, there's a lot of competition on that Stanford front line, but Katarina Macario has the hot hand right now. She's skillful and a finisher. For Florida, the first junior college transfer they've ever welcomed here, Laiz Araujo. And I asked Alan Crookup today, what makes the Brazilian so good? He said, she's a Brazilian. But she's the connector on this team and has amazing penetrating passes. You see Gabby Seiler starts at the back there. We'll talk more about that and more about Deanne Rose as well, one of the scoring threats for Florida. This, Heather, so much fun for us to see. Again, as soon as we get the schedule, even before we know we're working it, you say Florida, Stanford in August, I'd like to be there. Oh, heck yeah. The way these two have battled over the last couple years, we just are expecting another great one. Underway between the number one team in the country, one of them anyway, Stanford in all white and Florida in black and blue. At home at the Disney Lacrosse Stadium, they usually play at this time of year in the track stadium. A few uh, problems with the PA system over there. So we're at Disney where they play their postseason games and it's actually a bigger field, which for these two teams might mean we're in for a treat. Michelle Shaw off the Stanford left wing with the big diagonal switch for Kira Carusa. Into the penalty area going end line and ran out of room. But already that big diagonal switch that Stanford loves. Yeah, we saw the left forward show playing a great little diagonal ball in behind. Carusa taking the ball out of the air and a great quality chance for Stanford. Paul Ratcliffe in his 15th year at Stanford. Tremendous record. And for the Florida Gators, Heather Mitz quick hits. Well, for Florida, it's right now their defensive set pieces. They have an experienced goalkeeper in there who struggles in traffic. So individual defending is going to be crucial and also possession. You know, usually Stanford is the one that's used to putting pressure on these teams. So if Florida can make them chase, then they've done their job. The other freshman starting, Kiki Pickett for Stanford, gets forward here. And again, it's Carusa against Florida's Rachel Smith. Smith got the better of that one, got it away to... Laiz Araujo, we're just going to call her Laiz. That's what she went by for Brazil in the under-20 Women's World Cup last year where she captained Brazil. And again, the first junior college transfer Florida's taken. She'll be in one of those three attacking midfield spots for the Gators. Probably not the same one all night. That throw is targeting Macario and Kristen Cardeno able to clear. For Stanford. Off to a 2-0 start, Mitz quick hits. 
First of all, it's just composure on the ball and their playmaking ability. We've been able to see that already from the very beginning for Stanford and then confidence. They're the number team, number one team in the country now. So just want to use that confidence because it's intimidating. And by the way, the team that they share the number one ranking with, West Virginia, lost last night in overtime to Virginia, which to be fair is a top 10 team. So Stanford a chance to consolidate that spot with a winning weekend. Rachel Smith again gets the better of Kira Caruso over there. That was a great little combination. Pickett getting forward. Caruso staying really wide, but the great recovery from Smith. Becky Burley looking on, the only head coach this program has ever had. Old Faithful. Gabby Seiler standing over the ball, won the free kick there for Florida. And Florida's really going to try to play it out of the back. They said Stanford's going to press us, and we think we can play through it. But again, this is an early season test on both sides to see where they're already comfortable and where they need plenty of work. Cardano coming out of the back to Brianna Solis. Spent the summer training with the Orlando Pride in the NWSL in her hometown. Now Espinoza had it stripped. And Cardano able to come away with it under pressure from Jordan DiBiase. Susie Espinoza is not Florida's normal starter. This is just her third start, and she hasn't had to make a save yet. Kaylin Marquise has a hand injury. They don't expect her to miss the whole season, but she's not available yet. And so it's Espinoza backed up by a true walk-on in goal for Florida. Michelle Shaw trying to test her. Can't hit the target. Nice little cut from Shaw right there. But yes, the inexperienced goalkeeper. It's going to be a true test for her tonight, but Shaw's being very active on that left side. There you see Kaylin Marquise with the cast on her hand. Expected to be her third straight year as a starter. And again, they do expect her back during the season. It's just a matter of when. Sarah Tricoli on the ball for Florida to Laiz. Now Solis will bring it outside for Laiz. Deanne Rose, the Canadian international, waits in the middle. The most maybe dynamic newcomer to this team. Laiz back post headed away by Tegan McGrady for the game's first corner kick. And Laiz did a nice job of staying nice and wide. So Lee's able to find her open and what a great little cross in there. Good header away by McGrady. So set pieces we expect to be a Stanford advantage. Gabby Seiler's gonna take this with Florida attacking. And sent wide of the net after the initial ball in. It'll be a goal kick for Stanford as Myra Palayo may have caught a knee to the side of the head accidentally there. You see Palayo, they'll rotate five or six players through the three attacking midfield spots. Plus you could see Gabby Seiler there. Palayo starts on the right. Allison Jahanzus, first year starting in the Stanford goal. And they'll also try and build up out of the back. This is Sam Hyatt, who's only the second transfer that Stanford has ever accepted into its women's soccer program. Came from Boston College. DiBiase's pack, pass picked off by Laiz. Sarah Wilson starting it right back, and now Cardano goes long. Deanne Rose only had one touch so far. They're going to want to get her involved. This is Tricoli to Palayo. Good run by Parker Roberts into the penalty area, and it's knocked away by a combination of Alana Cook, the tall one, and Kiki Pickett, the short. Pickett is listed at five foot nothing, but she is maybe the most fun and exciting player to watch on the Stanford side. Hyatt's pass picked off, but the second ball won by Shao for the Cardinal. Here's Andy Sullivan wearing the fluorescent captain's armband. 
And McGrady will bring it backward for Stanford. A lot of talent on the field. Stanford has eight starters who have played for U.S. Youth National Teams in the last year, plus Andy Sullivan, who's played for the full national team. And Macario, if she was eligible for the U.S., she'd only moved here from Brazil when she was 12, probably would have been capped as well. Yeah, my goodness, you, you look at their bios, and every single one of them has national team experience. And Becky Burley even said they, they have the pick of the litter. Upset in the second round of the NCAA tournament last year by Santa Clara, as Espinoza clears that one out of the back. Florida lost on this field to Auburn in the round of 16. Premature for what they were hoping for. Offside call against Stanford here. Offside call. So these are the numbers on Stanford last year. Dominant in the regular season. Lost at home to Santa Clara in the same game where Andy Sullivan tore her ACL. They lost in overtime. You win the Pac-12 back-to-back -back years the way they have. You're a great program, but they haven't been to the College Cup since beating Florida in penalty kicks to get there in 2014. That's only two seasons away, but it's Stanford. It feels like a while. Florida does break Stanford's press here. Wilson looking long for the run of Rose. And broken up by Alana Cook for another corner. Yeah, and that's what's going to need to happen is the outside backs do need to come forward and be able to get some service off and be able to be aggressive in the attack. Great little ball right there from Wilson bending into Rose. To not one of her best touches, but a great opportunity for Florida. Dan Rose still only 18. Born in Ontario to Jamaican parents. Olympic gold, uh, bronze medalist, I should say, last year with Canada. Seiler playing it back post, but Rose was offside, and it runs out for a goal kick. Seiler last year was one of the keys to Florida's season. When she moved from midfield to defense, that's when they started to go. And they didn't win the SEC regular season, but they won the tournament, beating both South Carolina and Arkansas, but then upset, as we mentioned, by Auburn. And Savannah Jordan and Meggie Doherty Howard, both professionals among the key players, departed. Yeah, it's amazing how versatile she is. I do still think that attacking midfield role is her best position, but it's nice to see her be able to come back in this back line. I do think she calms things down. She's so smooth back there. She has amazing vision. Look at this. They're twice as good defensively, at least last year, when she was at the back. I believe it. I think she calms Cardano down. She keeps people in check. And by the way, those weren't all in the same position. She played right back, left back, and center back. You said she was versatile. <laughs> Basically, she could play anywhere except in goal. <laughs> only, her sec knows? only her second year eligible to play for Florida after transferring from Georgia. And she's already got her degree from Florida, by the way. She's enrolled in a master's program for the fall. And we'll see where Siler winds up. Right now, she's at left back with Rachel Smith at center back. I think that's just based on the last free kick, but they, they won't mind. Well, she's not in a hurry to switch positions. They're, they're all pretty comfortable back there. I think they're pretty interchangeable also. DiBiase finds Shao. And the throw in goes Florida's way on that near side. DiBiase, one of those with the U.S. under-23 national team over the summer. She scored the game winner in the regular season when these teams met last year. In overtime, it's going to be a, a theme. And Stanford has a dangerous free kick here in the 12th minute. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about this either, but we'll see here in a minute. I think Parker Roberts is coming back. She did get all ball, but by the looks of it, it's a great opportunity nonetheless for Stanford. Well, do you shoot or do you cross here? Stanford has an enormous advantage in height for set pieces. Sullivan, the right footer, and Shao, the left footer. An experienced goalkeeper, Andy Sullivan's going for it. First start since tearing her ACL in November. It's Shao instead, back post. And Florida able to deal with the first Stanford set piece. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Stanford, eight players in his lineup, five, six or taller. Florida has three. So that's why, that's among the reasons, they also have terrific service, that Becky Burley was so concerned with defending free kicks, corner kicks, and the like. Good decision by McGrady. Wide open there on the right for Cook to take that space. Tricoli got it to Solis. Just that short passing we've come to know and love from Florida. Tricoli to the overlapping right back, Sarah Wilson. Hyatt held her up, McGrady came, McGrady came back to win it for Stanford. One right back though, great moves by Palayo, it'll be a Gator throw. It's good work in the midfield, Tricoli was coming back, her and Andy Sullivan have been going at it since the beginning of the game and just a, ni a lot of nice composure on the ball. Nice job on the right flank too, adding numbers. Sanford's doing a nice job of dealing with it as well. Inexperienced goalkeeper, but they told us Susie Espinoza was comfortable with her feet, and you just saw it. Siler looking for Rose, and it was well defended by McGrady, but here is Deanne Rose. Numbers up for Florida. Laiz, pointing instructions. Wants to hit it herself. And sends it up toward the locker rooms, but not a bad effort or a bad time for Laiz. Now, after our game on the SEC Network, they're gonna go across campus. Volleyball doubleheader starting at the O'Connell Center at seven o'clock, number one in volleyball, Texas. Taking on number 12, Florida, that's coming up after our game on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Also have Utah against Kentucky in volleyball later on tonight. Macario had a half step on Cardeno. Seiler able to slow Stanford down. Tierna Davidson moves it wide. This is Kira Carusa. Got Rachel Smith going down, played it across, and Cardeno was there. Boy, Caruso's found a lot of opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one against Smith there, and maybe two for Stanford, two for Florida so far in those head-to-head -head battles. Well, for Caruso, she's really staying very wide, so when they're able to find her, she's being extremely successful, making Rachel Smith really work. She has to be very patient against her. She led the team last year for Stanford with 10 assists. Long ball out of the back by Wilson, and Sam Hyatt controls for Stanford. Jahan Suze has to concede a throw in though. Well, they didn't give us Vuvuzelas, not that we would have made use of them, but uh, plenty given out in the stadium. And you'll hear them anytime those in blue do something good. We'll give that throw in to Stanford. Our referee this evening, Rebecca Pagan. The assistants, Brooke Mayo, Natalie Simon, and Jamie Willis, the fourth official. Both teams come in 2-0, and and both teams have dominated the shot count in their openers. Florida needed overtime to beat Florida Atlantic on a Siler penalty kick before taking down Troy 5-0 on Sunday. Stanford was up at Marquette in a tournament and used big second halves to beat both Marquette and Wisconsin convincingly. Outshot Wisconsin 17 to one. Rachel, take it! I think that's what Paul Radcliffe had said. Some of the things that ne they needed to continue to work on was just the partnerships, the combination play, and knowing when it's on. They got two freshmen in the starting lineup. They've got several more who we'll see off the bench. 
And we told you Andy Sullivan making her first start of the year today. She had played as a sub in both games up in Milwaukee, played about 30 minutes in each, coming in late first half, leaving early second half. She starts today, but she is still on a minutes restriction. Not given an exact number, but they're being very careful, more careful even than Paul Radcliffe told us Andy Sullivan would like. Yeah, I think it's hard for, for players because they want to play no matter what, so it's, I think it's great. Sullivan thought she was coming off there, but it's actually Jordan DiBiase coming out, replaced by Jay Boissier, who had started in Sullivan's spot in the Wisconsin tournament and did a terrific job, really. So rare to see DiBiase come out. So it's Boissier, Sullivan, and Davidson in the middle, and Sullivan's the deepest right now. Once you come out in the first half, you can't come back in in the first. Everybody eligible to start the second, and then everybody gets one chance to re-enter in the second half. So we won't see DiBiase again until the second half. And if you were going to sub Boissier for Sullivan, that opportunity is now lost in the first. There's Alana Cook wearing the captain's armband as a junior for Stanford. She and Davidson co-captains from Far Hills, New Jersey. They got a lot of California kids, but they bring them in from all over at Stanford. Andy Sullivan is a Virginia product herself. Backward to Jahan Suze, who has split time in the first two games. Lauren Rude played against Wisconsin. Into the middle of the field for Florida. This is Tricoli. Siler, who's gone to left back right now. I think they want her one-on-one -on -one against Carusa because Smith was struggling. There is Rachel Smith clearing for Florida. Yeah, and I think that's actually a good call. Caruso seemed to be getting in those pockets of space to be the most dangerous. She's a great player. So why not push Cardano or Siler over there, have Smith come inside. She's been familiar playing there as well. She's got the speed to be able to cover. One thing it highlights is that Macario in the middle number 20 for Stanford hasn't been that dangerous or that much around the ball so far. Well, we said one of the keys to for, for Florida was to possess, to continue to have Stanford chase, and that's kind of what has been happening. They target Deanne Rose here, and Cook dealt with it. You know, I was glad to see Sullivan go into that last tackle. She lost it, but she went in full speed, looked comfortable. And she was in with the national team last year. A couple college players invited in. She got to play, and she was the only one to get invited back. And you said you would talk to uh, some people around the national team about how Andy Sullivan looked in the, with that full group. Yeah, with Carly Lloyd, and she ended up playing with her alongside her in a couple of those games. And she said what she really liked about Andy is that she reads the game well, that she's just a great soccer brain, and that technically she, she plays these great penetrating passes. So quite the compliment coming from the, uh, the best player in the world right now. Sullivan was co-captain of the under-20 national team when she was 18, a full cycle earlier. And they call her Sunshine Sully because she's always smiling off the field. A little more serious on it. And that's from central midfield, those numbers. And she is the odds-on favorite for the Herman Trophy as the player of the year after being a finalist last season. Yeah, so now it is just about being smart, working your way back in. Smith couldn't connect with Laiz. Laiz is calling for the press as Kiki Pickett prepares to deal with it. Siler wins it for Florida. That press paying off. Here's Laiz. Well, there's a lot of flash. He drops it off for Siler. <laughs> I always wait for the substance when the step overs start coming. There's Macario with a good touch. Gets it back from Carusa. Boissier is the target, and Rachel Smith just got a heel to it. Still in Stanford's possession, though, with Carusa on the run. 
Good pressure here from Kira Caruso. Relentless. Comes away with the ball. Couldn't get it to Davidson. Didn't have enough power on it. And Davidson, some, someone else on Stanford that we haven't said her name too much. Her and Andy Sullivan, very active usually in there in that defensive midfield role. Not enough touches for her, but I do think Debassier, when she's come in the game, has really changed it, brought a little bit more energy off the bench. Here's Michelle Shaw interchanging with Tegan McGrady. Tierna Davidson back to Boissier. Gave that one away. Parker Roberts up to Deanne Rose. One of the rare back to goal touches she's had and again turns it over. All Stanford at the moment. Twenty-fourth minute. No really tight scoring chances for either team so far. Just a couple of shots each way. Wilson clears that one, trapped by Sullivan in the center circle. Great touch to get away from Tricoli. Out wide for Shao. Michelle Shao, 1v1, lays it off. Just too far for Sullivan, who lost her footing as well. And the game's just been being played in, in the midfield. Just a battle between the two teams. The one bright spot I will say is, is Carusa and Shao. They've had some, some nice looks up high and wide, but the final pass is just not there. Davidson in the attacking third. Tierna Davidson into the box, left-footed shot. Espinosa stops it, the rebound is a goal. Macario, every game she's scoring for Stanford, and the Cardinal go on top. We talked about Shao, He's, she's had some success. Andy, or Davidson able to step up, beats the initial player, takes a shot, and what a great initial save. But not enough, because Macario, it's right to her feet. Florida defenders need to help Espinoza out just a little bit more. Four goals in three collegiate games for Katarina Macario. She's only played about 105 minutes sharing time at forward and she's got four goals that one opportunistic after davidson let fly with her left and as you can see andy sullivan in through 25 good minutes taken out for stanford nice to do it with a lead so savannah coleman number 14 a freshman in for stanford and this will shift some things around we'll deal with that later because Florida's on the attack. Here's Laiz, top of the area. Deanne Rose, cleared away by Carusa, who's gonna adopt more of a midfield role now. Coleman will go to center forward, and Macaria wide on the right. College rules, you get an assist if your rebound is scored, so it's assist number one on the year for Tierna Davidson. And I know Sullivan was frustrated when she came out, but she has to feel pretty good about those minutes. Palayo with the intercept, finds Deanne Rose. You're shaking your head. Just Deanne Rose needs to, to think a little bit quicker. She had runners off of her and took the touch. Eventually was crowded out of the picture. You know, you would expect that from a freshman, but she is experienced with the Canadian national team. So she does look a little bit tired right now. Might be uh, close to bringing out a sub up top for, for Florida. She played in the under 17, under 20 World Cup and Olympics all in the same year. That's on the Florida side. For the Stanford Cardinal, we bring in the head coach, Paul Radcliffe. Paul, thanks for joining us in game. Uh, aside from the goal, what has pleased you so far? Uh, ooh, I don't know if it's been our best performance. Um, I think Florida's doing a good job of closing down spaces, and we need to simplify the game a little bit and connect passes and build the ball up the field as a group instead of just trying to counter. We know we're going to see limited minutes for Andy Sullivan. Is it's at the last we will see of her, and what did you think of her performance? No, Andy will be back in there. Um, I thought Andy did well. She's a hard worker and did well. But, you know, collectively as a group, obviously we can play better. But uh, she always gives a great performance.
Thanks for your time, Paul. We'll let you get back to it. All right, thank you. Paul Ratcliffe in charge of Stanford, and the goal certainly flatters the performance, as I think he indicated. Uh, both these teams hold themselves to such high standards. You rarely get either coach to say they were totally satisfied with anything. Again, Sullivan played 25 minutes, and he indicated that we will see more from her, so that would be an increase in minutes from the first weekend of the year. Here's Rose, pulls up, and her cross with the left is blocked. Tegan McGrady down in the corner for Stanford, slamming the ground with her hand. Well, I, didn't, I didn't see what happened. Not a favorable reaction from McGrady, the junior from San Jose. Well, I think this is a, a much needed water break for Florida as well. And here's just Deanna Rose cutting it back. And there was no contact, but still not quite sure what it is, but fortunate to see her down. Yeah, and this is the thing you don't want to see in any game, especially this early in the season. There's a major injury as McGrady tries to recover. Stanford and Florida have become familiar foes, and they typically play tight ones. Oh, look at the face. Oh you feel for Tegan McGrady right now. Uh, we're not saying you can count on overtime today, but there's some trends in that direction. Stanford has typically dominated the shot count, but found the goals hard to come by. Teams have played five times, all times, a couple games back in 01 and 02 as well. And Stanford is 4-0-1 in those games. Four of the five have gone to overtime. Four of the five also played in California. This is only the second time they've met here in Gainesville. And Tegan McGrady limps off for Stanford. Paul Radcliffe instructions for his group. And Florida getting permission. That was the voice you may have heard, Becky Burley, getting permission to sub on the Gator side. So now we see Butters coming back in the game for Florida. Who had been starting. The outside back spot is a bit of a revolving door for Florida. And Stanford, we're going to see Beattie Goad, the Australian left-sided player, come on for McGrady, presumably at left back. And there's Beattie Goad. So an interview she did in Australia when she was 16, and it was the ultimate goal is Stanford University. Well, here she is. And they'll use her sometimes at left back, sometimes on the left wing. And it actually looks like she'll be on the wing here, and Shao will drop to left back for the Cardinal. Hmm. Savannah Coleman pressuring, and she and Cardano get tangled up. Kristen Cardano, KC, was not too happy about it. It is a Florida free kick. That's a, I'm a 23-year-old redshirt senior. You're an 18-year-old freshman. Don't try that on me. She's never happy about it. The other thing is we've seen Siler move back into that center back position. Smith out on the left once again. Are we keeping track of how many different positions Gabby Siler plays and how many times <laughs> she switches? Already lost track. It's a handball call against Solis. She started, I think, at six different spots last season. Stanford leads 1-0 on a 25th minute goal from Katarina Macario, Brazilian American who broke the ECNL, the elite junior system scoring record despite missing a full season due to an ACL injury. Just ridiculous youth scoring record. And again, Brazilian native, but has lived in the US since she was 12. And I believe the word is she'd be eligible for U.S. citizenship in 2020. Nice. And they're hoping she uh, does hold on and play for the U.S. Stanford, very happy to have her. And very happy to have Savannah Coleman, two freshmen up front. They're both in there right now. 
Boissier coming back defensively for the Cardinal. Temperature in the high 80s, muggy as well as you would expect in Gainesville in August. This is Macario pressuring Rachel Smith, lays it off, here's Coleman. Tried to make one extra pass. Beatty Goad on it now. Brings in Shao. She had an uncharacteristic bad touch. It's Deanne Rose working all the way back with the ball. Goad strips Sammy Betters. That came off the hand of Parker Roberts, but not intentional and not called. Yeah, and Deanna Rose is having to do a lot of work. And she's the primary target, that one, you want her staying high, but she's having to come back and try to help win the ball back. Now you can see Palayo switching with her. She's going to stay high. Goad one-on-one -on -one against Betters. Still has it. BD Goad cutting it back. Great turn by Coleman. Can't find the finish to match. It took a deflection. What a great reception of that pass, pass to set her up. Meanwhile, on the Stanford bench, Andy Sullivan, Sunshine Sully, trying to cheer up Tegan McGrady. It's a good teammate. Yeah, but what a great chance by Coleman. And we talked about those set pieces, how dangerous Stanford is, especially with the inexperienced goalkeeper in there. The height advantage that they do have. First corner kick for Stanford. They had one free kick earlier. Shao with the left foot looking for Davidson. Parker Roberts was right there with her, and that was important for Florida. Second phase still going on. Boissier sends in. Coleman is open. And just saw it glance off her forehead into the corner. Deanne Rose, all with the back heel, gets around Goad and turns it over. Stanford will reset. And it seems like they have found more of a rhythm over the last maybe 20 minutes. Well, we talked about in the very beginning, the battle was in the midfield and, and quite Honestly, I felt like since Boissier, when she since she came in the game, she brought in a spark off that bench and really got in there. She was having great movement off the ball, was able to link the lines together. And then we're actually seeing Stanford also able to spread out when they do not have the ball and they're making Florida chase. Three subs for Florida here in the 32nd minute. Sarah Tricoli, one of those coming out. There you see Julia Lester. And we're also going to see our first look this season at Melanie Montiagudo. Been battling with a calf strain, didn't play last weekend. And they're real high on Montiagudo and what she can bring to this team from an offensive standpoint. Happy to have her back from that injury. And also with that sub, Gabby Seiler went from center back to attacking midfield. Rachel Smith back to center back, Julia Lester to left back. Can you follow all that? Mm, barely. I know you can. <laughs> Long ball between Betters and Monte Agudo, who's going to go up front. Monte Agudo applying pressure. And Jahan Suz again clears it up into the stance. Great grab down there by a young man with a Vuvuzela. Props to him. This is Macario deep in her own half. And you know, you're mentioning Lee. Laiza's name a lot in the very beginning for Florida and quite honestly haven't been able to mention her name at all either, so very quiet on the Florida side. Stanford leads on a goal from Katarina Macario in the 25th minute. Espinosa under pressure, Davidson got a first touch to it and now she fouls Parker Roberts. It'll be a Florida free kick. Those international teammates for the U.S. on the opposite side here. 
Davidson losing the ball. Parker just able to win it. A little frustration as well. Not the greatest touch from her. There's Tierna Davidson. Kristen Cardeno moving up the field. Monte Agudo the target against the five foot tall picket. Handled it without any trouble. And Jahan Suze, they call her AJ, at the back with it. Having taken over for Jane Campbell. Now in the NWSL with the Houston Dash. Campbell actually had the decisive penalty kick against Florida three years ago to send Stanford to the College Cup. Jahanzu's a redshirt junior has been backing her up for three years. Beatty Goad now waiting for the overlap and over hit the pass for Davidson. And each team will make a change here with Samantha Chung coming on for Florida and Mariah Lee, number three, coming in for Stanford. Macario, the goal scorer, coming out. Just a great start for Macario to the season, to the game, period. What she brings to this team. She's played uh, 115 minutes and scored four goals in college soccer. Not, not bad. And she had a she drew a penalty kick as well. And in preseason, she went upper 90 on UC Davis. So the transition's going okay. There's some big names in the forward pool in college soccer this year. We saw Savannah McCaskill last week. She didn't score, but she drew a red card, had an assist, and she's since scored three goals in two games. And then on Sunday, we'll be in Tuscaloosa to see Dana Castellanos, the Venezuelan international, who I think has five goals already on the year for Florida State. It might be six. Makes your job fun, doesn't it, Jonathan? Yes. I'm looking forward to that one. Cat Whitehill will join me for that. Couldn't resist the chance for her to work a game in Alabama. Monte Agudo got a touch to that. It falls to Betters. Um, good didn't, recovery. Didn't seem like she was sure what she wanted to do with it. Uh, I, I think she was looking for an option to play into, not exactly to try to beat three players. But good recovery from Go to be able to come back from that outside mid position and win it. No harm done. For the SEC, we'll have some of our players to watch coming up from Heather at halftime. Savannah McCaskill make that list? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we'll also preview that game, Florida State and Alabama. Heather's SEC players to watch. And we'll tell you about Becky Burley's parents, unfortunately lost this year and remembered by the Florida soccer program. That's all coming up at halftime. Gabby Seiler on the ball, trying to find Monte Agudo. And it's cleared away by Sam Hyatt for Stanford. Here's Cardano, wants to step into the attack. Parker Roberts, first year eligible to play for Florida after redshirting with the under-20 national team last year. She transferred in from Kansas. So still this year and two more years of eligibility for Roberts. Here's Boissier. Battled injuries earlier in her career, healthy now and contributing to this Dangerous Stanford team. Mariah Lee trying to get on to the end of that. Julia Lester brings it out of the back. This is Tess Sapone, who's into the midfield in place of Solis. Again, Stanford in the coaches' poll was co-number one with West Virginia this week. West Virginia lost in overtime to Virginia last night. Megan Reed with the game-winning goal on a scramble after a free kick. Parker Roberts still going into the penalty area and well recovered by Shao, cleared by Alana Cook. Now tomorrow, our countdown to the college football season here on the SEC Network rolls on. We'll have you covered with team previews. Kentucky at 7, Georgia at 7.30, then Florida. Auburn wraps it up at 8.30, that's Saturday. 
on the SSC Network, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Matty Alexander in up front for Florida, and that'll drop Monty Agudo into this midfield role. You play for Florida, you better be able to play multiple spots. Mariah Lee turned that one over. Here is Monty Agudo. Got around, pick it. Gets it in with the left foot. Alexander arriving. Jahansu's got there first. And I think the big question for Florida right now is, is who's going to be that lethal person up top to be able to score some goals for them? First of all, they have to get the ball. But second of all, they have to be able to be a threat. You know, I feel like in the very beginning there was a battle in the midfield, but Stanford really has controlled the possession. They have more energy, and now they have the ability just to knock it around and, and make Florida chase. Deanne Rose, scouting report-wise, is supposed to be that player. It's hard to leave it up to a freshman no matter how accomplished. And, of course, she's still getting used to her teammates, and they to her. Seiler and Roberts combined to win it. Florida has numbers. Maddie Alexander in the penalty area. Lays it off. Jahansus can't get to it. Tie game, Samantha Chung with the goal. And you know what? I want to give all the credit to Parker Roberts because she wants it. She's getting in the box. She's making things happen. And I do believe that this is Samantha Chung's first touch of the game since she had been inserted in. Not bad for her. Nice little bent ball. Quite honestly, I'm thinking that Stanford's goalkeeper should have maybe gotten a hand on that. Parker Roberts helped set it up. Maddie Alexander then fed it to Chung. She'd only played 38 minutes coming into the day. And Samantha Chung from outside the penalty area and as Heather said, it's one Allison Jahansus is going to want back. She had one of the early season plays of the year for Stanford, saving a penalty kick against Marquette that could have put them behind. But that one, it looked like she saw it a little late and saw it go under her hand. And we knew we'd get a close one. Florida gets the tying goal five minutes before the half. This is Mariah Lee, and well shielded out by Rachel Smith for a Florida goal kick. Samantha Chung, daughter of Mark Chung, former U.S. international and MLS standout, three times named to the best 11. I remember him as a Jersey kid with the Metro Stars, wrapped up his career with Colorado and with San Jose. Unbelievable left foot for Mark Chung, and Sam scores with the right, her first goal of the year. And ties the game at one. I was going to ask you what kind of a player he was. Oh, fun, fun winger to watch. And he was uh, all left foot, but he was so good at using it, it didn't matter. Yes. <laughs> the uh, heritage in the family is Chinese, Jamaican, Canadian, American. Wow. <laughs> so her grandfather played for Jamaica. Her dad played for the U.S. Avery Collins into the game for Stanford, came in after the goal, number 22 here. And she commits the foul on Seiler, who since moving to midfield has been everywhere. Right, she's, on, she's at right wing right now. And she helped set up the goal too with that tackle that led to Roberts, getting it to Alexander, getting it to Chuck. She did her job. So let's see, she's played center back, left back, <laughs> attacking mid, and right wing. Has she? I don't know if she played left wing or not, but it's early, it's the not first yet. half. Here is Alexander, freshman, feeding Monty Agudo, running off the left. Monty Agudo going against Lee. And that cross coming in, Siler the target. Still in play, Gabby Seiler. 
couldn't keep it in finally. You could tell from her Almost. body body language it ran yeah. out. She was deciding what to do. It looked like she was going to wind up and volley it, but then it just skipped a little bit on her. Thought she could keep it in, but Stanford's ball. Gabby Seiler, an outstanding basketball player at McIntosh High School. Most points for a basketball player, male or female. I think it's a good thing she focused on soccer. <laughs> She played club soccer uh, growing up in South Georgia with Savannah Jordan. And so when she looked to transfer from Georgia, that was a big reason Gabby Seiler wound up here, wanted to play with Savannah Jordan again. Only got to play together last year. So while Stanford has, by our completely unofficial count, had the better of possession in this first half and took the lead in the 25th minute. Sam Chung's goal has Florida right back in it. And I think a little more confidence now as well. Mariah Lee running here. Great speed by Julia Lester to yeah. close that down. Yeah, and Lester has been a bright spot on that back four line, using her speed to be able to recover, get up and down that flank. Started 17 times as a left back last year, so if Seiler were to move into the midfield permanently, Julia Lester might find herself back in the lineup. Mm -hmm. In or out, they expect her to see plenty of time this year. Great atmosphere at Disney Stadium, the lacrosse facility. The soccer team uses some of the time here in Gainesville. Seats about 1,500, a little more intimate, and yet the field is bigger, which coaches love, especially of these two teams. And good composure right there for Cardano and Smith. That was for the tackle earlier that Coleman made, right? Final seconds of the first half. It's been just what we wanted. A goal from each team. Attacking soccer, and I think the coaches got what they wanted too. Some things to work on going forward. It'll definitely be interesting to see how they come up out in the second half, changing their tactics and their lineups. Stanford won and Florida won through 45 minutes in Gainesville. So much coming up at halftime. We hope you'll stick with us. And, of course, plenty more to come in this game. Macario for Stanford, Chung for Florida, all square at the half. Time in Gainesville in a top 10 matchup between Florida and Stanford. We're getting ready, of course, for SEC play just a couple of weeks now. And to get you ready with our players to watch, it's Heather Mitz. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, for Arkansas, one of their best players on the team, Jesse Hartzler. Last year, she had eight goals in 2016. Kristen Dotson for Auburn was her single season record holder with 38 points. Gabby Seiler is stepping up with the absence of Savannah Jordan and is leading the team in scoring. Mallory Eubanks is one of the fittest players on this team and will lead Mississippi State. CeCe Kaiser, she is crafty on the ball and is leading Old Miss with five goals so far. Savannah McCaskill, we all know her, one of the best players in the country. Three goals in the past three games. And Emily Bates, she finds herself in great pockets of space. She's smooth on the ball and she has a knack for scoring. Those are some of the players to watch in the SEC this year. We'll get our first look at Alabama on Sunday. They're hosting Florida State, their head coach Wes Hart's old team, and one of the best forwards in the country as well, Dana Castellano, shortlisted for the FIFA Best Player in the World Award. She'll be up front for Florida State. Emma Welch, so crafty on the left, one of the experienced players for a young Alabama team. Kickoff is 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 noon Central, Sunday on the SEC Network between Alabama and Florida State. Here in Gainesville, Florida, halftime between the Gators and the Stanford Cardinal. First half highlights and Heather's breakdown when we come back. Back to Gainesville, Florida. We're at halftime with the Florida Gators and the number one Stanford Cardinal, all tied at one at Disney Stadium. 
Jonathan Yardley and Heather Mitz with you after the first half. 1-1 the score. Heather, what do you take away from that first half? We know both coaches were looking for things to work on. I think they got some. I think so, too. Uh, you know, I think for the most part, it's been a battle between these two. Most of the time in the midfield, but Stanford really doing a nice job of being able to to get a goal early and then having that patience to sit back, spread out, keep the ball, and it was Florida with their one chance being able to come back and tie it up. We turn to highlights from the first half, and as Heather mentioned, Stanford did get on the board first. Tierna Davidson with the move, the left-footed shot that leads to the goal from Macario. And it's not the initial shot because Espinoza does her job, but Macario once again in the right place at the right time for the freshman. And then Stanford got some bad news here. Tegan McGrady defending Deanne Rose pulls up limping and had to leave the game in the 27th minute. And the frustration on her face tells a big story. And then Florida's goal would come from that side of the field. Maddie Alexander to Samantha Chung. And look at this little bent ball. But I tell you what, Stanford's goalkeeper has to save that. Allison Jahansus couldn't keep it out, and that has us tied 1-1 at the break. Andy Sullivan warming up, ready to come back in. Coming up next, we'll tell you a little bit more about the Florida soccer program and some people they lost. The Florida Gator soccer program lost two of its greatest supporters during the offseason when Florida head coach Becky Burley's parents, Ron and Nancy, both passed away. Familiar beacons at home games throughout Becky Burley's 23-year career at Florida, Ron and Nancy will be missed and remembered by everyone around the program. To memorialize the Burley's passing, the Gators seniors, led by Cassie Owens and Jesse Holmes, approached the Athletic Association and the SEC to get permission to put R and N patches on the team uniforms for the 2017 season, and they surprised Becky Burley with that announcement just before the season opener. Ron and Nancy will continue to be with the Gators soccer program in spirit this year and beyond. SPN's SEC network coverage of college soccer. 1-1 between Stanford and Florida on goals from Katarina Macario and Samantha Chung as we get ready for the second half. We look back in time to two of the biggest moments in the history of these respective programs. One national title apiece. And for Florida, of course, 1998 against North Carolina. Fotop, the free kick, and our own Heather Mitz was all tournament. The national title for the Gators in 1998, 26-1 that year, avenging their only loss. And then Stanford in 2011, this was their third straight final. They had lost one nothing in the other two. Cam 11 to Teresa Noyola, unbeaten team, making up for their years of heartbreak under Paul Radcliffe. That was 2011, the Stanford national title. And Becky Burley, of course, was in charge for Florida's as well. Back in 98, she started this program when she was in her 20s. Numbers from the first half will tell you it's been a close thing. Of course, 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. And slight edge to Stanford in shots and fouls. But Florida had those two corner kicks. Yeah, it's been a close battle back and forth for sure. But not that many quality chances. Florida needs to do much, much better. Now, we told you it's a muggy one, and we do have a change in the center. The referee for the second half will be Natalie Simon, who was one of the assistants in the first. And Jamie Willis, with whom she was conferring, will move from being the fourth official to running one of the lines. So Rebecca Pagan was feeling the effects of the heat, and Natalie Simon will take over for the second half. Well, actually, they may have come up with an, another fourth official for us. At any rate, changing the officiating crew with Simon into the middle for the second half. Underway in the second half, Florida and Stanford tied at one. We will try and figure out who's playing where as we go. We can tell you Gabby Seiler's not at the back. Big surprise. It's Cartano and Rachel Smith, the center backs for Florida. 
Sammy Betters and Julia Lester, the outside backs. Parker Roberts, Brianna Solis holding. Gabby Seiler, Sarah Tricoli, Deanne Rose are the attacking midfielders, and Maddie Alexander starts the second half up top for the Gators. Susie Espinoza still in goal. Yeah, I think it's a good move to, to move Seiler up a little bit to the midfield. I like her more there. Alexander was a bright spot coming in as well. So good changes for Becky Burley. And then for Stanford, we see Wazer still in the game. We're going to go. I'm going to start with the back because I see Tierna Davidson playing center back, which is not something we've seen so far this year. She's in in place of Sam Hyatt. So Pickett is still the right back. Alana Cook at right center back. Tierna Davidson, left center back. And Michelle Shaw, the left back for Stanford to start the second half. Beatty Goad wide on the left. Kira Caruso wide on the right. Katarina Macario, the forward. And the central midfield trio. Jordan DiBiase, the highest of the three behind, or ahead of, I should say, Jay Boissier and Andy Sullivan, who is back into the game. So neither team returning to the starting lineup it used to open the game. Here's Macario trying to hold off Lester. Up back and through, Boissier looking for the run of Carusa. And Lester goes backward to Espinoza. Picked off by DiBiase, they try to move it quickly. And the back heel doesn't come off for Carusa. Stanford with that pressure, forcing a throw in here. Early stages of the second half. Jonathan Yardley alongside Heather Mitz, enjoying this one from Gainesville. Gabby Seiler moving into midfield for a second straight game. Sends it long, looking for Alexander, and Jahansu's way out. Nice tackle by Pickett to make sure Tricoli couldn't do anything with it. And look at Pickett coming back. We knew she was tough, and feisty, just getting stuck in right there, but. Nice turn by Alexander. Gabby Seiler into the penalty area, playing it low, and it's cleared away by Stanford. Rose, one of the targets at the back post who couldn't connect. Already Alexander at forward and Seiler in the midfield, paying off for Florida. Boissier at the other end, limited to nine games last year, didn't play but one game in the previous two due to injuries, playing a big role early in this Cardinal season. And again, Jahansu is able to clear. And this was Maddie Alexander. Oh, we'll get to it in a second because that one stays in. Rose on the far side. Trying to go against two, and it's out for a goal kick. We go back to Maddie Alexander, the forward, connecting with Siler. And good little ball into Siler. Getting her head up, looking for Rose, who is unable to connect on that one, but great little early opportunity for Florida. Sanford on the other side. Great way to start the second half for both teams. She was all SEC as an attacking midfielder at Georgia her first two years, and again, moved to defense in the middle of last season. Really, because Florida, it's not so much that they couldn't defend, their defenders were giving the ball away and giving away high percentage chances, so putting Seiler back there shored up their ability to keep the ball cleanly. This year, they have been moving her forward to find more attacking options. Again, Alexander with a good ball. Rose onto it. Her cross hits Seiler, but comes back to Deanne Rose. Stays on her feet. Contact in the box. A Florida player went down. It's not called. Solis from outside off the target. Florida looking much more dangerous in the first five minutes here. And I think it once again, it just has to be with Seiler in that midfield position, making a huge difference. Alexander also. She seems better able to bring her teammates in to spot those runs than what Deanne Rose was doing. And we see Deanne Rose still on the field, but in a different position. Deanne Rose, ability to get in behind, look up, trying to find somebody nobody's on. But Florida really throwing numbers forward here. Cardano getting into the attack. Rose top of the box looking for Tricoli. 
Now Brianna Solis. Seiler. Gabby Seiler with the right, it's deflected and goes wide. Davidson got ahead to it, that might have saved a goal. Jahansus taking no chances, makes it a corner kick. And Seiler looking up, realizing she doesn't have any pressure on her, decides to try to bend that one, and Davidson able to get ahead on it. Looks like it was going wide, but again, Jahansus had to make sure. And Gabby Seiler dangerous off either foot, coming in from the left. Third Florida corner, Brianna Solis. Can't beat the player at the near post. It'll still be Florida ball on the near side. Lester throws for Seiler, turning Davidson, playing it low. It was blocked there by Pickett. Carusa needs some help. Macario was running away from her just when she was looking for an option, but Stanford able to find Macario now. DiBiase really making a good run. The timing wasn't there. Big switch is on for Boissier, but Betters intercepted for Florida. Oh, and she was on too. Much quicker tempo early in the second half. Tricoli, this time, didn't have anybody making the run behind the defense. Lester with the intercept, can't hold on to it. But Florida has upped its pressure here. Caruso, great touch for DiBiase. Has Boissier in behind the defense. Jay Boissier for Stanford, it's over the top. What a great one though in combination play right there from Stanford, nice little build up. Look at this little back heel, the composure, knowing she's there. Boissier in the space, what a great recovery from Betters to be able to come over and put some pressure on her. Deanne Rose trying to turn Shaw over there. Again, Tegan McGrady, the Stanford left back, left injured in the first half. No further word on McGrady, but Shaw starts at left back. And again, Tierna Davidson at center back in this second half. This is Tricoli for Florida. Caller Mish comes from Michigan and she wins a free kick for the Gators. And you would figure she'll be one of the prime targets here at five foot 11. She is again, one of the only Florida players who's really got a lot of height. Sammy Betters steps over it. Brianna Solis delivers on goal, and Jahansu's had to be careful, but held it out. First official save for Jahansu's. And Florida keeping that pressure up. Roberts with the heel to Alexander and Pickett blasted out of bounds. Should be a Stanford throw and it is. Came off of Siler. Here's Macario. Nice lead for Kira Caruso. Numbers at the back post for Stanford. Caruso lays it off. Macario. It deflects. Beatty Goad waiting for it. Blocked by Espinoza. Big stop.
And we weren't sure what to expect out of Espinoza, but she's made some great stops tonight. DiBiase's header is wide. A foul was called before that anyway. BD Goat had a chance for Stanford a moment ago. Now, one of the biggest concerns tonight was the inexperience of Espinoza, but I tell you what, great build up from Stanford. Nice early shot, her ability to come off the line and read this one and keep her team in it. Goad was wide open at the beginning of that play when I thought Caruso would look for her. She moved farther in and Goad ended up not having as much time. But Stanford finding a few more openings now that Seiler's moved forward for Florida. It's almost like Florida's committed to being more attacking at one end and is giving away opportunities at the other as a result. 1-1 one, one here and a reminder tomorrow on the SEC Network, our countdown to the college football season rolls on. We'll have you covered with team previews. Kentucky at 7.30 and Georgia, uh, Kentucky at 7, Georgia at 7.30. Florida at 8, Auburn at 8.30. That's all tomorrow night on the SEC Network presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Also on the ESPN app. Boisier is offside. Oh. Jonathan, just to go back to what you were saying, I mean, that's part of the risk. And we, we talked about playing against the top team in the country. You're going to figure out what some of your weaknesses are. And I think both of these teams are, are able to do that. Stanford has been able to adjust a little bit more here in the second half. And Florida's taking more risks. Cardano finds Tricoli between... DiBiase and Sullivan. We barely called Andy Sullivan's name in this second half. We've called Gabby Seilers a lot, but this time she's flagged for being offside. If you're Stanford, how do you respond to some of the urgency and some of the changes that Florida has made, including putting Seiler higher up the field? Well, I, I think obviously you have to be aware of where Seiler is because she is so dangerous and creative. But I think the combination play between Macario and Carusa and then also Guazer has been so good in the midfield and the forwards that they have been dangerous. So now, now it's a matter of finding them. Pickett and Alana Cook combined to win it for Stanford. And a reminder, Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central Time. More ranked team, or another ranked team in Florida State, taking on Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Kira Carusa on the run, cutting it back, rolls all the way through, Boissier. Great dribbling, lays it off, goes, finish, puts Stanford back in front. Boissier set it up, Goad hammered it home. And Boissier has been the game changer for me. She came in in the first half. She brought energy off the bench. She got the start. She's been all over the place. She made that one happen once again. Caruso down here doing some work in the, in the end line. Cutting it back. Great little ball right here. Just keeping it alive. And an easy one for Goad. The first touch that she takes here with the defender right on her really is the key one. It gives her an advantage on Roberts. And it's the composure to cut that one back. Makes it really easy for Goad. I'm just wondering where the Florida defenders were. Because Goad was wide open. Florida trying to respond in a hurry. Here's Alexander. Got the shot away. Great stop by Jahan Suess. She redeems herself full stretch. Yeah, and on the other end of things, I think Alexander has been the bright spot for Florida as well. Huge difference for them since she's been inserted in the second half up top, making a huge difference. Just looking up, ripping a shot, able to get her hands on this one. And Madison Alexander, her second career start. He had started the opener against Florida Atlantic, came off the bench against Troy, another Michigan product for Becky Burley, and maybe making a case that she and Deanne Rose can play together and should be in there together. She's trying to hold it up here off the throw-in. 
Betters cross, hit Andy Sullivan. Falls to Rose, onto her left. DiBiase heads away. Cardano's cross, Pickett misjudged it, falls to Seiler. And Andy Sullivan, I beg your pardon, that was DiBiase, was there for Stanford. You could see the idea there by Seiler, but it turned over, Stanford gives it right back. Great touch by Cardano to get away from Boissier. Has runners ahead of her. This is Alexander. Gonna hit it herself again, blocked by Cook. Florida setting up camp in the Stanford half at the moment. Solis. Siler into the penalty area again. To her right foot again, over the top. Florida keeping the pressure on. And you can't give Gabby Tyler that much space. Unable to get around it on this one, but just a little bit too much from Alana Cook. Had more shots in the first. 17 minutes of the second half than we had in the entire first half on both sides. And that'll be a free kick for Florida. Rachel Smith long out of trouble. Madison Alexander chasing. Alana Cook playing it safe. Out for a throw in on Florida's left side. Well, the energy has been better from both sides, and I do think that the changes that they made at halftime have made a huge difference. Lester into the penalty area, headed out by Davidson. Seiler twisting and turning. Lester, nice lead for Solis. Back post. Rose is there. Onto her left foot. Deanne Rose shot was blocked by Shao. Parker Roberts had a good first touch, but kind of lobs that one in, and Jahansu is able to catch. That's not how Stanford always plays, kind of that early long ball, and that is somewhat mission accomplished by Florida to make them do that. Yeah, I mean, they, they like to, to be able to possess and, and play it through the midfield. And I, I think that, you know, we haven't mentioned Andy Sullivan's name once. She, I don't think she touched the ball once, quite honestly. So that's a good thing for Florida. How are they doing the it? She, she's on the ball here. Well, Stanford's unable to find her, and they do have it to be able to build it, and then she's having to defend. So she's just not able to settle down and play her game, and you know, it's one of the best players in the country right now. So the less she can touch the ball, the better for Florida. Sullivan intercepts there, and Florida does not have numbers at the back. Boissier played it early and didn't hit it the way she wanted. She was targeting Macario, yeah, Macario who's out of your picture. Macario was definitely on. Just need a little bit more on that ball to be able to get in behind. Julia Lester whistled for the foul under pressure from Jordan DiBiase. It'll be a Stanford free kick. Good battle for that one. You see the foul count at the moment. 
Sullivan miss hits the free kick. Stanford really hasn't been able to create a lot of set pieces and has not taken advantage of the ones it's had. Good ball in, but Boissier's off. Just a half step. Just a tad. And that's what you don't want if you're Florida. You wanna, don't want to have Andy Sullivan facing up and dribbling at you with nobody on you, but luckily he's a little bit too much on that pass. That throw-in is going to go Stanford's way, which means the substitution for Florida will have to wait. Stanford can just find that switch of points. The other side's on. Carusa through for Boissier. Cardano able to read it, but not hold it. Here's Pickett into the attack. We've barely seen her get forward tonight for all the excitement she generates when she does. Davidson out wide. Gets it back in the penalty area, trying to turn. And the decision is a goal kick. Tessa Pone, Myra Palayo, and Laiz all coming in for Florida. And Andy Sullivan will come out for Stanford, potentially for the last time today. We'll have to see. A different look to this Florida team in the second half. Rose flying forward on the right. Palayo's at center forward right now. The switch for Laiz, cleared by Pickett. I think anybody in the front four can play anywhere for Becky Burley, and she will try you there, certainly in non-conference play. In the second half, though, Heather, we've seen Florida, it seems to me, has pushed the, the wide forwards, the wings, whatever you want to call them, higher. Meanwhile, at the other end, into the penalty area goes Coleman, and it's tackled out of bounds by a desperate Rachel Smith. We were just talking about Florida's forwards being high. Well, Coleman, since she's been inserted, pushing that back line really high, the nice ball over the top, and another great opportunity for Stanford. We said they were forcing Stanford to play long. They were denying Andy Sullivan the ball. It was with more numbers pressing Stanford's back line, forcing long balls like this. Yeah, and if Pickett's not going to get forward, at least she can play a nice little long ball over the top to Coleman like this. Good little battle in there. Good set piece opportunity from Stanford now. And there's Smith diving to get that one away, and she's going to need attention now. We've already seen Tegan McGrady come up hurt, and our center official be taken away in an ambulance. Rachel Smith able to walk off. A reminder, we're going uh, about five minutes away across campus to the O'Connell Center for volleyball after us. It'll be another number one team on the line, the Texas Longhorns taking on Florida from the O'Connell Center that's following our game here on the SEC Network. So Seiler comes in for Rachel Smith here. Having just come out a minute ago. Second corner for Stanford. Into the six. Not cleared. And caught by Espinosa. Brave catch for the redshirt freshman. It's been a real test for Espinosa today. We weren't quite sure what to expect, but she's done a very nice job. Stepping up for this Florida team in the absence of Marquise. Macario trying to find Carusa. Parker Roberts clears for Florida. Stanford trying to 
turn the tide of the recent Florida pressure, even though the Cardinal leads in the game. Tess Sapone able to switch for Roberts. She has an overlap, won't use it. Good tackle by Pickett. Great tackle by Pickett, because there was a lot going on on the Florida side. If she couldn't be able to connect, they would have looked up. Boy, Kira Caruso never stops working. Nutmeg Seiler drops it off, and Tess Sapone got in the way. How about Kira Caruso on that play? You're right about Caruso. A large part of why she had so many assists last year, but she's been the workhorse up there on the right side. Able to turn. Comes right back to that corner. That came off of Boissier, and it'll be a goal kick for Florida. 20 minutes and change left, and while the Gators have been pressing, it is still Stanford in front. Sarah Wilson comes back in for Florida for the first time since the first half, replacing Lester. That one has left that the building. <laughs> Do they have ball girls? They have ball boys, but there three of them are behind the goal. Nobody's at <laughs> midfield. <laughs> Alana Cook's okay because the clock's running. Now they stop it. There you go. Boissier, nutmegged by Wilson. Tricoli plays it through for Rose on the left. Two in the box. Deanne Rose against Kiki Pickett. And it'll be a Florida throw in. Gators have only lost four games at home over the last three years. Three of them in this building. which mostly comes because they play their NCAA games here. They trail one of the nation's number one teams, Stanford, two to one under 20 minutes to go. As Samantha Tran comes on for BD Goad. BD Goad was sprinting off the field and someone told her to slow down. <laughs> She has the go-ahead goal, the decisive goal at the moment in the 59th minute. You may wonder how we have a fourth official despite losing one of our officials, and it's actually a, a volunteer who is on hand and uh, has enough that worked out well. Uh, has enough officiating credentials and was here uh, observing that he was in the right spot to take over. Hope he gets some extra credit for stepping in as well. Boy, what a second half it's been. So many more chances than the first. In large part due to Florida's change of approach. Unfortunately, it hasn't paid off for him yet. Chow is fouled. It'll be a Stanford free kick. Stanford, of course, yet to start classes. So they came straight from Milwaukee to Florida, trained down in the Tampa area until they came up to Gainesville Wednesday night. And they usually take an early trip east most years. Played Georgetown, played Penn State. I think their one loss on those trips was at West Virginia a few years back. Chow is stripped by Laiz, turns over to Sarah Tricoli. Now Tess Sapone, sophomore, who worked her way into the defensive midfield rotation for the Gators. Pickett cut that out. Here's Katarina Macario. She scored the opener for Stanford. This is 
Nice transverse touch. Yeah, and those two freshmen, Pickett and Macario, have been impressive. Nice turn by Myra Palaya. She wanted the run of Tricoli, tried to look off the defense. Unfortunately, I think she looked off Tricoli. And I was actually surprised that she didn't look up and take the shot, but she waited too long. Not her best decision. Macario out wide, offside, flag is up. Against Kira Caruso. Stanford bench is perplexed. You know, as a, a former Florida goalkeeper, Taylor Burke, who I heard the other day saying, we're not taught to shoot from outside, we're taught to almost dribble it into the net. <laughs> and sometimes you and I are sitting up here saying, pull the trigger, pull yes. the trigger. It's on, it's so blatant. Siler out of the back, forced there because Rachel Smith came out. Pickett overhead, clears that into the Gator bench area. Rachel Smith will come back in. And if you can keep track of all the other subs, you are ahead of us. Melanie Montiagudo back in. And Parker Roberts comes out for the first time today. Bree Solis replaces her. It's Solis and Sapone in that midfield as the cross drifts. And Jahansu holds it. Florida wants a corner. They think Jahansu's caught it and let it go out. She says it was already out, and she has the referee on her side. Stanford scored first. Florida tied it just before halftime. And BD Goad's goal in the 59th minute from a Jay Boissier assist. The difference right now. DiBiase trying to hold it with two on her. Gets it away to Shao. From Omaha, Nebraska. Goes forward, gets it to Coleman. Big switches on. Sam Tran, one-on-one -on -one against Lester. Beg your pardon, this is Wilson. Tran's left-footed shot blocked. Second ball is loose. Carusa oh. lives there, but couldn't get it down. What a beautiful buildup from Stanford, all the way from the left side. Great swish of point from Coleman to be able to get the ball all the way across and just keeping it alive. Florida can't clear, and it's a little bit too much underneath the ball, not enough over it. But a great buildup and a lot of confidence. See the possession from Stanford. Showing why they're the number one team in the country. Siler back into a midfield role. She couldn't connect with Sarah Wilson there. Coleman got ahead to that. Cardeno gave it away to Stanford. DiBiase found Kira Carusa into the penalty area. Carusa blocked by Espinoza. Coleman's follow is wide. Florida living dangerously, still in it. There's a mistake that's leading to this great little pass into Carusa, trying to go across her defender. Great save once again from Espinoza. Showing up big and Coleman unable to get it on frame. I hope they credit Espinosa with a save on that because she certainly stopped it. We have her with three now for the game, which again, Susie Espinosa had zero saves to record two shutouts in the first two. So again, Rachel Smith at center back. Gabby Seiler farther forward for Florida. Laiz. New Sammy Betters was overlapping. 79th minute in Gainesville. 
Alana Cook heads it, but right into the corner where Palayo picks it up for Florida. Neat footwork, left-footed bender. Headed in at the back post, tie game. Gabby Seiler got to it. Here we see Palayo just keeping it alive, getting the ball in. Seiler able to get her head on it. She's come up so huge for this team time and time again so far this season. Three goals, three games for Gabby Seiler. Moving her higher up the field has changed this game. One of the, one of the reasons. And it pays off for Florida. She gets on the end of Myra Palayo's cross. 2-2. Two, two. Headed down the stretch here. Did you expect anything less? <laughs> we knew it was going to be exciting. These teams have played five times. Four of them have gone to overtime, including three times in the last four college seasons. Twice in 2014 and once last year. Stanford's won twice, won nothing in overtime. And the year that they tied 2-2 in overtime, they went to penalty kicks. It was the NCAA quarterfinals. And Stanford went on to the College Cup. Adding another chapter right here today. DiBiase scored the winner. Last year had that one blocked. Avery Collins is into the game for Stanford. Came in after the goal and Trans Cross did not take a deflection. It's a goal kick. Volleyball's coming up next and we flip over and show you what's going on in the Vert Challenge. Live looking at the O'Connell Center. Oregon leads the match two sets to one, but Number five, Nebraska, leads this game four. And some more high-flying action coming up next here on the SEC Network. Number one, Texas, taking on number 12, Florida. That's following our game. And then Utah and Kentucky, also top 25, comes up later tonight. All of that streaming live on the ESPN app. Great day of action here in Gainesville. Our game certainly is not disappointed. Wilson leaves it for Seiler against Pickett. Love this matchup. Seiler goes left, plays it low. Tierna Davidson able to clear. Sarah Wilson sends it to the top of the box. Well done by Monte Agudo to bring it down. Stanford has lost half of its back line today. We don't know why Sam Hyatt hasn't played in the second half. Monte Agudo finds Laiz. Gets to her right foot and puts it away. Some Brazilian magic for the Gators. They lead. has redeemed herself. Monte Aguda with the ability to play this beautiful ball on the ground. She acts like she's going to shoot, brings it back. Perfectly placed ball in the side netting. Stanford's goalkeeper has no chance of saving that one. Laiz announces herself. The cutback and the finish. And you said it, Monte Aguda had played her in. What a moment. One of the teams that has broken Florida's heart so many times over the years. And those kind of moves can help flip the script. Laiz Araujo, who Becky Burley found out about from a junior college coach she knew as a Facebook friend. <laughs> she said, we got a Facebook message saying we needed to check this player out from the assistant coach at ASA Junior College. The associate head coach, I should say, Walter Jaramillo. Florida went up, looked at Laiz, liked her, met Laiz, liked her even more, and started working things out. The power of social media. <laughs> you don't follow Becky Burley on Twitter, you're missing out on some smiles, because it's a, it's a positive stamp on your day anytime she posts. 
Still Florida attacking. Shots deflected and Jahansu's able to come up with it. That was off the foot of Parker Roberts. Well, Stanford just so spread out right now. Their backs and their midfields are pretty compact, but then you see how far forward their forwards are, which is great if you're getting the ball. You're keeping it and you can find your forwards. You want them high. But I think right now they need to have them coming back and helping a, lot, a little bit defensively. Avery Collins played that across. Rachel Smith dwells on it. Picked up by Macario. <laughs> Collins onto her left foot. Plays it across. Mariah Lee hesitated. I thought she had a chance at it. And Florida able to clear. Great battle there between Pickett and Seiler. And it's Florida ball. Love watching those two go head yeah, to head. That's what I was about to say. That's a fun battle to watch. Deanne Rose wants to check back in for Florida. Again, you gotta, if you're winning, you have to use your time-wasting subs before the five-minute mark. Because when you sub and you're winning inside of five minutes, they stop the clock. They'll stop any clock for Laiz right now on the Florida bench. Wilson called for a foul. It'll be a Stanford free kick as Laiz gets hugs and handshakes. You don't score three goals against Stanford very often. Gave up less than a goal a game last year. You may have heard that. And Davidson's instruction. wide open. That was a Florida instruction to mark up at the back post. It falls to the back post, Mariah Lee. And the shot would have counted, but it went wide of the mark. Second half has been crazy. We were 1-1 at halftime, and Stanford got on top first with BD Goad. Yeah, and BD Goad, right place, right time. But Florida's response swift. Gabby Seiler, a big part. Yeah, and Gabby Seiler moved into that attacking role, and she's been so dynamic since moving there. Three minutes later, Laiz on the spot. The composure to be able to bend this one in. What a moment. She's a long way from home, but I think it's going to feel a lot more like home after you get a reception like that. Stanford trying to respond. Macario, Carusa, Collins all on the run. Macario with the ball. Looking for Kira Carusa. Plays it across. Still Carusa fighting for it. Great turn, oh, with the left, Collins was denied by Smith's header. Kiara Kiki Pickett, busting out some step overs. Mariah Lee, miss hit that to the near post. And this is what Stanford needs right now, great movement, adding players. The numerical advantage to be able to try to get in. Not the best cross by Lee, but I like the fact that they're adding numbers and trying to be aggressive. Should Florida move Siler back on defense in I your know, book? Might not be a bad idea right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah Lee has the switch, but she tried to go too vertically and it was picked off and now she fouls Siler. Pretty clear cut. And she's going to get a talking to, but the clock is running, so it doesn't help her. That's one where you might want to kick the ball away and take the yellow card, because it would stop the clock. Let's go, 87th minute. Florida trailed 1-0 and 2-1 in the game. Leads it 3-2. It's early in the season, and, and rankings don't mean a whole lot, but... Come NCAA tournament time, if you're debating number one seed, number two seed, coast to coast, a win over Stanford would help your cause. Yeah, this would be a huge win for Florida. And the rest of the SEC, I think, rooting as well, RPI-wise. 
Seiler finds Monte Agudo, but didn't have the legs to get back to it. Cook just sprays it out of bounds. Now you want the ball boys to disappear. <laughs> And the foul called uh, against Pick. Coleman. Oh, Coleman. Which again will give Florida plenty of time to stand over the next free kick. Samantha Chung, Gabby Seiler, and Laiz, the goal scorers for the Gators. Palayo, whose cross set up the tying goal. Can't hold on there, Boissier gets it ahead. Avery Collins chasing, got it ahead. Carusa chasing, the goalkeeper Espinoza out. Miss kicks it short. Bad tackle by Collins. Everybody getting away with everything at the moment. Avery Collins is onside. Still going around Cardano. That's a great block by Parker Roberts in the penalty area. Huge play for Florida. That was a point blank shot. Pickett with the steal. She has Macario if she can find her. She can't. DiBiase does though. Katarina Macario gets to her right foot and fires high. That was the moment. The freshman has already scored so many goals. She can't add another to the highlight reel. Yeah, and you had Seiler down there for a second, but just Florida cannot clear the ball. They're just keeping it alive. Sanford in a great position. I thought Macario was for sure going to put this one away, as we saw her do earlier in the game, cutting it back to her right foot. She just leans back a little bit too much. What a great opportunity from Stanford, putting the pressure on Florida right now. Given who that was and how comfortable she looked getting to her right foot, We've seen her score similar goals before in her short college tenure. I thought that was ticketed for the back of the net. And the Stanford bench did too. Minute and a half to go. It's a Stanford throw at the halfway line. The Florida bench ducks out of the way of the ball. Florida's playing down a man right now, and Macario's wide open. Caruso, great header. This is Macario. Right foot again, right to Espinosa. Big stop. That time she made sure to keep it down, but it was within reach of Susie Espinosa. Tricoli bangs it long. 30 seconds to play in Gainesville. Florida has never beaten Stanford in five tries over the years. This one falls and is cleared by a reaching Rachel Smith. 10 seconds. Into the penalty area for the second time in two days. Down goes number one in college soccer. Florida comes from behind for a 3-2 win over Stanford. Well, a ton of credit to both of these teams. We knew it would be a close one. It was a battle to the end. Wow, what a second half we saw. The first half was good between two of the best teams in college soccer. The second half was thrilling. Yes, it was, Jonathan. I think uh, the insertion of Alexander up top made a huge difference. Florida definitely came out in the second half. A lot of interchanging of players. and Saw Stanford early. Davidson just making some magic right there. And Carusa able to get on the board. That opened the scoring, 25th minute, Katarina Macario. And Florida would respond just before the half. Samantha Chung from outside the area. This was a big goal. First touch, bent in, but Stanford's goalkeeper should have saved that. That gave the Gators some momentum. 
And although they came out of the locker room hot, Stanford got the first goal of the second half with Boissier setting up BD Goad. And you thought the Cardinal might be able to hold on from there, but the Florida pressure was too much. Yeah, both teams just looking so strong. Palayo able to keep this one alive, and Gabby Styler on the Herman watch list. And one of the reasons why right there coming up so huge again for this Florida team. That was the 79th minute. Three minutes later, Seiler to Melanie Montiagudo to the new Brazilian, Laiz. I just love the fact that she fakes the shot and then bends it. No chance. They would hold on from there despite those late chances from Katarina Macario to take down number one and do a little chopping over Stanford for the first time in Florida history. And we have to give a lot of credit to Espinoza also. Aren't quite sure she's going to be able to fill the shoes of Marquise, but I tell you what, Becky Burley has two quality goalkeepers. Well, these fans sure had plenty to enjoy. You don't see a team come back from 1-0 and 2-1 down in the same game to win it against a program like Stanford. But once every five years, I mean, it doesn't happen. That's Susie Espinoza, her third career game. She had never made a save before today. She came away with four, and this may have been the most nerve-wracking in the 90th minute. And Stanford just keeping it alive. Mocarero right there. So many chances on goal, but Espinoza just gobbling it up, and solidifying the win. Katarina Macario had blasted high and wide from an even better position, maybe 30 seconds before she got that one on target. But Espinoza equal to it. And we're waiting on the Gator captain, Gabby Seiler. We expect to have her shortly. Again, she's already got her degree, enrolled in the master's program, and Florida's now mastered Stanford for the first time. Joined by Florida's uh, center back slash left back slash left wing <laughs> slash attacking mid slash right wing, Gabby Seiler. Gabby, how many spots did you play today? I have no idea. <laughs> Probably like four different positions, but it's okay. What are you feeling right now for, for one of the, the biggest wins we've seen in, for the Gators in the regular season? I mean, I'm really happy. I think it's a great win in the beginning of the season. Um, but, you know, it's a win and it's a game. We still have plenty of games left, so I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. And, I mean, I think it's a great motivation going into the rest of the games, but we're not done yet, that's for sure. Gabby, what did Becky tell you at halftime? You know, she said, we're used to this heat. We play in this heat every single day, and we spent a lot of the first half chasing, I think, but going into the second half, she's like, we have them. We can do this, and I think that those words, just we can do this, um, going into the second half, I think that's what brought us all the motivation and brought us all the heart in the second half. Tell us about uh, the second and the third goals, yours and Laiz, and kind of how you saw it on the field. You know, um, I felt like offensively we were there. We just couldn't finish, so um, kind of just grinding it out and um, trying to finish. I, I, I don't really know. We just <laughs> just trying to be there and be at the end of the goal and um, trying to finish the best we could. Um, Laís, I mean, that was her one of her first goals of the year. And I mean, she's been killing it. She's been, you know, close to the back of the net every time. So I'm glad she got one in the back of the net finally. Gabby, congratulations. This was so much fun to watch. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Gabby Seiler, the Florida captain scored the tying goal and was part of the buildup that led to the winning goal as Florida comes from behind, down 1-0 and 2-1 to knock off one of the number one teams in the country, Stanford, 3-2 in Gainesville today. Final score, Florida 3, Stanford 2. A reminder, soccer coming your way Sunday, Florida State, Alabama. SEC Storied and Volleyball coming up next right here for Heather Mitz and our entire crew. I'm Jonathan Yardley. Thanks for joining us. Florida 3, Stanford 2. What a game. Thanks for watching from Gainesville.